So those of you who have been training a little bit with me kind of know, and if you don't, this is important information, but the formula for how we do jujitsu here at SBG is base posture connection pressure. And the idea is that everything we're doing is trained with aliveness, that because if the drill is not alive, then there's no timing. And if there's no timing, you're not really developing any functional skill that's gonna translate against a resisting opponent. So the epistemology, the training method is about aliveness. The curriculum is about fundamentals. And that's where sometimes a lot of instructors will get hung up on trying to think about what's a fundamental and what, what isn't a fundamental. But it becomes confusing if you start to try and catalog techniques. Like is this technique a fundamental or is that sweep a fundamental? Instead of thinking about the techniques, I think a better way to think about it is the structure that may, allows the technique to work. So if you think about jujitsu done at the highest levels, the world's best black belt competitors, you're not gonna find any two that have the same style. They're all very, very different. Hodger's very different from Hoffa or whoever, whoever two you pick. But underneath their stylistic preferences about how they set up techniques or what variations of a particular hook sweep they like or what choke combinations they like, underneath that there's this structure, this skeletal structure that they share in common. And that is the fundamentals of jujitsu. And that's what I like to focus on. So I like to just teach only that and then let all of you on your own develop your own style. And you will develop a style over the course of a decade or longer. That will be a reflection of you and it'll be different from everybody else, right? But what's gonna allow you to apply that style against somebody bigger and stronger and who also knows what they're doing is the fact that you will have mastered the fundamentals. So the analogy I often use is a tree with the base of the tree being the roots and that is where everything starts and that is very literally your connection to the ground itself your center of gravity. Without that platform, you're not gonna be able to build the posture you need in order to have leverage. Because what comes after base is posture, and that is very literally the relationship of your body to your opponent's body. And what we do in jiu-jitsu is we put ourselves in a position, a superior position, which doesn't always mean on top, but it means the most structurally efficient position you can be in so that you have more leverage than the other person does, or you have the leverage to apply the technique. So base is the roots of the tree, posture is the trunk of the tree, and then from any given position, any given base and posture, there's only gonna be a few directions you can apply force, a few angles at which you can apply force. Never really less than two or more than about five, okay? And those are the main branches that sprout off the trunk of that tree. From that, it flows into infinite twigs and branches and and that is the counter for counter evolution of technique for technique. Somebody has a technique and here's a counter for the technique and here's a counter for that counter. And that just grows exponentially and that's grown since I started Jiu Jitsu 30 years ago and that will continue to grow. And it's fun and it is cool to learn that stuff and you can get that literally anywhere including YouTube. But what makes it work is the roots, the trunk and the main branches of that tree. That's the tree that it all works from. When you start doing counter for counter, you wind up playing other people's games, right? But if you address their game, if we reverse engineer their game at the, tr at the trunk of the tree and at the roots, you stop them from playing their game at all, right? And so it's just, it's a more efficient way to learn jujitsu, a faster way to play jujitsu. Uh, and, and number one, it gives you the most possible freedom for figuring out stuff on your own about which particular variations you like. So I'm gonna try and micromanage as little as possible in what you do. I was at a seminar a few years ago and there had been a jujitsu instructor that was there a little bit before I was and there was somebody there that was pretty short. They were like, everybody's short to me, but they were like five foot one something. And the instructor that was there before told them not to worry about playing open guard because their legs were too short, which actually made me kind of mad because I tell you, I've, I've rolled with some people Many years before that, I'd gone down to LA and everybody said, Matt, there's this person's open guard is unbelievable. Nobody can pass it. And they set me up to roll with a person the next day, see if I could try and pass their guard. So I was there at the gym waiting for the person to show up. They walk in the door, they were like five foot three. And they did have a really good open guard, but they were like a little ball, right? So you don't wanna have somebody tell you what you're gonna be good at and not good at. I've seen tall people who were great wrestlers and great at playing on top and short people that had great open guards. And in my personal opinion, your personality is gonna be a lot more of a determining factor as to how you play than your particular weight or length. 
But either way, your body will sort it out as we train. So again, I want to try and focus on those fundamentals. Base, roots of the tree, posture, trunk of the tree, and then pressure, angles, directions of force. Now between, that's how, jiu -jitsu, that's how Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu works. Between the trunk of the tree and the direction of force you apply force at, in that little space there, you can kind of see on the tree diagram I drew up there, is connection. And that is how you maximize your leverage from a particular position of base and posture before you apply pressure. Connection always occurs after you have base and posture and prior to you applying pressure. That is when it happens. And that's unique to Hicks and Gracie Jiu Jitsu. Uh, I'm not implying that he's the only one that does it. Everybody that does Jiu Jitsu really, really good is doing it really, really good because by definition, they have good connection. At those moments where you guys have felt yourself passing the guard really smoothly in a way that you don't even understand how that went so smoothly, you had good connection. But Hickson's the only person I've, I've ever known who has put a word to it and has, and has tried to teach it as a thing, right? So that comes from his lineage. And so that changes the formula a little bit to base, posture, connection, pressure. And that's what we're gonna focus on, okay? So we're gonna start with base. So let me borrow you, Liam. 